K. Rule. We all know him. But how many Kremlings in the Kremlin crew could you name right now? Three, five, maybe even eight? Well, there's a lot of fucking Kremlings. And don't worry, by the end of this video, you'll know every single one of them. This is every single Kremlin. These goblins first showed up in the game Donkey Kong Country, but this wasn't actually supposed to be their first game. The original idea for the Kremlings came from this unreleased game, Johnny Blastoff and the Kremlin Armada. This was supposed to be some sort of point and click game that you could play on your computer, but it never ended up releasing. And to be honest, we don't even really know how far it made it into development. We really know jack about this game. Pretty much the only thing we've seen is this sick ass concept art of the original Kremlings. And even though they do look different, they resemble the Kremlings we got in DKC a lot. The Kremlings would sadly never get to actually fight our boy Jonathan, but the idea of the Kremlings lived on. These dumbasses were so cool looking that they needed to be in some game, any game. Luckily for the Kremlings, it just so happened that the game they would get to appear in would shake the world. So now that Donkey Kong Country has released, everyone now knows about these alligator people. This was the game that started it all and began our love for these strange reptilian beings. But let's take a deep look at these guys and we're gonna figure out what they're really all about. Starting with the leader of them all, King K. Rule. Usually for this series, I try to keep the main character as brief as I can, only really saying the interesting shit about them. Because honestly, I don't like wasting your time. Everyone knows about these characters, I don't want to tell you shit everyone knows. But K. Rule is by far the coolest character of the bunch I've talked about so far. He has so much neat shit to him that I honestly can't wait to show you. But let's start off at the beginning and let's talk about the King's conception. The earliest ideas of K. Rule started out in the Johnny Blastoff phase. The Kremlings needed a leader, so they drew up this concept art of the Kremlings leader. His name at the time was Crud. He definitely looked very edgy at this point in time and overall just different. But you gotta remember this was before he was supposed to be fighting the monkey from Mario Bros, so it makes sense. Crud went through a few different changes throughout development. Like at one point his name would have been King Clinker and he would have had a wife named Queen Crap. They did a lot of experimentation with the character is what I'm trying to say. But finally when bringing the Kremlings into DKC, they changed his name again, this time to Commander K. Rule. At this point he's pretty much the K. Rule we know today, but they obviously would drop the Commander thing, instead giving him the title of King K. Rule. The Commander title still actually appeared in the credits of the game though, which was a nice little reference they threw in. But I know what you've been thinking. What does the K in K rule stand for? People have been wondering this since the downfall of Mesopotamia. Well, it actually means nothing. It's just the letter K. And if you didn't know, this is actually a reference to the alphabet. The person who named K rule, Greg Mayles, said that this was just a way to make K rule seem more important than he really is. K rule has a very high ego, so he just added a K to his name to make himself seem more badass. And honestly, I think it's kind of effective. Greg Mayo said that in hindsight, if he were to have made the K stand for something, it would have been something dumb like King Kremlin Rule, or just something super out of character on purpose like King Keith Rule. So there you go, that's the history of K Rule's development. But what about K Rule in the games? K Rule didn't make it into Smash for his development history, he made it in because he's gas. He appeared in a lot of different BS, Mario Sluggers, comics where he's drawn with human-like hands, and even TV. And pretty much all of the media he appears in, he's seen as kind of insane and deranged. He enjoys beating his minions and even sometimes straight up kills them. Regardless of this though, most of his minions seem to still respect him, they love the dude for some reason. But K. Rool has more issues. Like his beef with Donkey Kong is super strange. DK didn't do anything to K. Rool, yet K. Rool still stole all of his bananas. You'd think this is just typical villain behavior, I mean Mario didn't do anything to Bowser but he still kidnaps Peach. But the difference is, Bowser actually has a motive, that being he wants to be with Peach, right? K. Rool doesn't even like bananas, and I know for a fucking fact he's not feeding it to his minions that he already beats. The only motive you can reasonably make of this information is that he just wants DK to starve to death. And looking into this further, this was actually confirmed by the writer of the DKC games. K. Rool stole the bananas to make DK starve, so that he can then live inside of DK's treehouse. Dude can just build a treehouse, he has made robots. And that's another thing about K. Rool, he likes to play dress up a lot. In every single country game, K. Rool has a new outfit and heavily role plays what he's dressing up as in that moment. 
Super Smash Bros. Brawl actually tries to change our mind on this and gaslight us into thinking the pirate outfit is actually a completely separate character. But it's just K. Rule. It's definitely not his brother. I don't really know what Brawl was smoking here. Moving on though. K. Rool's relationship with the Kongs is definitely strange. He apparently was at one point the student of Mrs. Deceased Kong, attending her school at Kong College. She stated that he actually has a lot of missing homework, and maybe this is actually why he's so angry at the Kongs. But at the same time, he also finds some of the Kongs attractive, like in the end of DK64 where he's staring hard at Candy Kong. And he does this while apparently having a wife. K. Rool is batshit insane if you haven't picked up on it already. And if you thought it couldn't get any worse, he's racist too. Read this shit. Yeah, King K. Rool is racist. Now you know. I can actually go on about this character for literal hours, but this is one Kremling and we have so many more to talk about. So I'm sadly going to cut it short and we're just going to move on to some other Kremlings. First, let's mention the Critter, the basic Kremling type. They're just your typical enemy and there's not too much to them. These guys are obviously from DKC as the basic enemy, and in this game, these guys are responsible for one of the best gaming noises of all time. The critters being the basic enemy of the game will sometimes get recolors that make them behave slightly differently in-game from the original. Kind of like how Mario does with the red Koopas. Like, this is a Kremlin that can jump. Awesome. But the critter itself really does nothing in DKC. They're just kinda iconic enemies for the series, right? But they're still pretty cool. I honestly feel like where they shine the most is in the Mario sports games. In most of the Mario Strikers games, for example, they make a critter be the goalie. And look how gassed they made him look. They treated him well here. They would also appear as playable characters in Mario Sluggers, and I looked up a tier list of this game so you wouldn't have to, to see if they were any good, and I found out they actually are pretty good. So I'm proud of them for that one. But I want to talk a little bit more about the DKC trilogy. Earlier I talked about how K. Rool plays dress up and one time he became a pirate named Captain K. Rool. Well, when he was the captain, he made the critters dress up as pirates too. And when they dress up as pirates, they are now known as separate characters called clomps. But while looking at the clomps, I noticed something. These guys now have peg legs. Meaning that if you're a critter and want to join K. Rool's pirate crew, you have to sacrifice your own leg to be initiated. This is just fucked up at this point. They dressed up as pirates for a little while until DKC3, where they were just completely replaced by these great value critters called Cobbles. And these are just some of the ugliest bastards I've ever seen. This might be one of the biggest downgrades I've seen in a while. There's also these purple cobbles and they're named Skittas because they skid on ice. Very creative of them. I'm just going to change the topic. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to brighten our moods a bit here. Let's talk about the Claptrap. This is one of my favorite Kremlin designs ever, probably. They're cute as hell. The Claptraps kind of act like pets to the Kremlings, where most Kremlings act as crocodile people. Claptraps are just crocodiles. Kremlings can talk, these guys can't, they wear collars and growl in DK64. You get the idea already, they're Kremlin dogs. They first showed up in DKC1 and they have become one of the most popular Kremlings since release. I feel like a lot of people know about him. He has one of the most fire trophy models in Melee, and even appeared as an assist trophy in Ultimate. Now this thing is cute, but you might have been wondering, how can we make the Claptrap look disgusting? Yeah, holy fuck, right? This is how the Claptraps look in the DKC animated cartoon. And they look awful! I don't know why they did this to my goat. I just talked about how in the games, the Claptrap kinda acts as the pets for the Kremlings. While in the show, they stand, so they can't be dogs. The solution for this was to make them act as disposable ammunition for this gun called the Clap Blaster. Claptraps get put into this gun, and then they get used as literal ammo. This cartoon was on the craziest substances. We're gonna talk more about this cartoon later, but for now let's get back to the Claptrap stuff. Just like the critter, the Claptrap has Country 2 and 3 variants. This will be a kind of common thing to be honest, get used to it. DKC2 gave us the Clamp On, which is just said to be the older brother of the Claptrap. They honestly are just bigger Claptraps, not too mind-blowing here. But in DKC3, we get the Crimp, which is actually just a Kremlin dog literally being referred to as Krem Dogs in some old Nintendo magazines. Now, Krem Dog is a very funny term to me, but I'm not a huge fan of these guys. I still prefer my goat. But let's talk a little bit about Klump, our next croc on the list. He's this strong military troop Kremlin. Klumps have always been implied to be one of the higher ranking members on the Kremlin crew. 
There's a clump that gives K. Rule updates on the Kongs in DK64, and there's also a clump named General Clump who acts as one of K. Rule's top henchmen in the cartoon. Just like I mentioned though, we got DKC2 and 3 variants, and 2 we have the cannon. It's honestly a really cool redesign for the clump, I like it more than the other redesigns we've seen so far. The only thing kinda strange about him is that they decided to give him ears now, which was a very bold decision by Rare. It's stated in the manual that cannons are just clumps that got trained to use cannons, so they really are just the same dudes, and I got nothing else to really say about them. But let's talk about the DKC3 gremlin, the bazooka. Now this dude is fire. This is just such a gas design. There's not much to the dude either, he's just this little Kremlin with a massive bazooka. The bazooka was the successor to the cannon. He doesn't resemble cannon at all, or clump, but functionality wise, like in the game, these two are pretty comparable. There's really not much to the dude, but I just really love him, I want to be his friend pretty badly. And I have yet to talk about the coolest part about him. Just look at him for a second. How the hell is he carrying that bazooka? He is a little tiny bastard, he shouldn't be able to carry that. That is made out of raw metal, and he's carry- He has to be one of the strongest Kremlings physically. These two would stay stuck in their respective games, sadly, but Clump would actually make it into Donkey Kong Barrel Blast, where he now wears a bucket on his head. He's also for some reason now the rival of Lanky Kong, and I'm not completely sure what beef these two could possibly have, but I'm not even really gonna think about it. Next Kremlin. Crusher. Crusher is kind of similar to Clump in a lot of ways. He's implied to be near the top when it comes to ranks, he's a prominent character in the cartoon, and he also has a military styled outfit just like Clumpathin. But Clump was treated better. Crusher has only appeared in like two games, in the original DKC and DK64. But in DK64, he's not even an enemy in the game. Instead, you can unlock him as a playable character in the game's multiplayer mode. It, it's actually, that's pretty cool. He's playable. But it's kind of strange that he's not even an enemy in the game. They made Crusher specifically for multiplayer. You can unlock him by taking pictures of 15 banana fairies in Donkey Kong 64. But the biggest Crusher fans were disappointed that he was only in multiplayer. They wanted him in the story mode too. So a Game Shark code was made where you can play as Crusher in the story mode, and you could play the entire game like this. When bringing him into the story mode, we can see some of his unused animations too, like a unique Crusher idle animation that never appeared in the multiplayer mode. It doesn't even end there though. Just a few years ago, a glitch was discovered to bring Crusha into the story without cheats. So if you're a diehard Crusha fan like me and want to play the story as Crusha without modifying the game, you can do that. But if you do it this way, the game's actually unbeatable. So I mean, it's kind of an ass trade-off. At that point, just use the Game Shark code. But fuck you, this is still cool. You can't take this away from me. Enough about Crusher though, let's talk about his DKC 2 and 3 variants real quick. Where I can happily introduce you to Cruncha, this fine pirate crocodile. This handsome Kremlin clocks in at 6 feet 2 inches tall, as well as weighing 400 pounds. Don't worry though, I know what you're thinking, because I was thinking the exact same thing. What are his turn-ons? Well, an official trading card from Nintendo Power tells us exactly that, we can see them listed here. He likes barbells, washboard abs, and feeling the burn. This is real information Nintendo gave us. They didn't have to give us these facts, but they did. And let me tell you, I'm so glad they did. Alright, but let's check out the DKC3 one now. This is just disappointing. I, I have notes, I researched, I have nothing to say about this one, that's how boring he is. You know, he's just an uglier looking crusher. And that's honestly kind of been a common theme about this game, except Bazooka, he's, he's cool. Now let's just, let's just move on, let's talk about Cackle. Now this Kremlin is cool. This is a skeleton slash Kremlin thing. He only appeared in one level in DKC2 and that's it. Not any other level, not any other game. He just exists in this one stage. He's still sick though. Four cackles appear in this level, each wearing their own uniquely colored bandana. It's stated in the game's manual that the cackles actually haunt Crocodile Isle. They would never appear in any game officially ever again, but they were used as placeholder enemies in Banjo-Kazooie's prototype Project Dream. I think it's pretty cool to see them like this, even if they were never planned to be in the game fully. But let's go back a bit to when DKC2 was still in development, to talk about Mr. X. This was how Cackle used to look before getting his final design, and he's pretty damn cool looking. He even has official completed art, so he must have changed designs very late into development. 
This dude made it so far in development that he was shown in promotional art for Nintendo Power, and even somehow managed to make it into an official player's guide for the game. Like, bro is not even in the game, how did he end up in the strategy guide? Mr. X is really cool looking. But in my opinion, I think we ended up getting the cooler design in the final game anyway. And if you disagree with that, you can lick my nuts. On the topic of undead Kremlings though, let's quickly talk about the cloak. These are undead Kremlings that can float. I think they're pretty cool. Definitely one of the more unique designs we've seen, right? The cloak only appears in Country 2, but he was originally meant to appear in Country 1. This is a document that the developers made while thinking of names and ideas for different characters that would appear in Country 1. We can see some more cut crumblings and even some cut animal buddies here. Like Hooter the Owl, yeah, yeah, sick rare. But there's something on this page that caught my fucking eye, bro. Dude, d do you see this shit right here? You're telling me Donkey Kong Country was at one point supposed to be called Monkey Mayhem. That's incredible. This is why Donkey Kong is so cool. Imagine going to Blockbuster in 94 to pick up the hot new game Monkey Mayhem? I would've lost my shit, dude! Oh shit, okay, yeah. Mo God, Monkey Mayhem. Alright, uh, the cloak, we're actually kinda done with that one already. Let's just finish talking about Undead Kremlings. I'm gonna talk about these two small ones back to back here. The Rock Croc and the Resident Demon. The Rock Croc is a tough-skinned Kremlin that only appears in one level in DKC1. Donkey and Diddy Kong actually can't hurt them at all because of their tough skin, so the goal in the level is to pretty much avoid them the whole time. These guys don't resemble anything undead to me, but apparently they are. The English player guides say that they're possessed, and the German player guides just straight up imply them to be zombies. So yeah, you know, undead, Kremlings I guess. But now the Resident Demon, the actual cool one of the two. This thing is fucking crazy looking. It only appeared once in DK64 in a single minecart level. This thing 100% gave kids a nightmare. Rare was kind of fucked up for this one. The thing shoots out flaming skulls and he's really edgy to be honest, but at the same time, he's not too edgy. I think it's a pretty healthy balance. He's just a really cool Kremlin. I definitely approve of this one. After this level, the resident demon would never be mentioned again and was eventually forgotten. But believe it or not, this isn't even the coolest looking Kremlin in Donkey Kong 64 because the Kasplat is in the game. Brother, on God when I first saw this thing, I had to actually stop for a second because I had to actually process what I was looking at here. They didn't just cook. They made a five course meal with this character design. Kasplats act as King K. Rool's bodyguards in DK64. And for some reason, Rare really wanted people to know that they were bodyguards. So much in fact that in some languages, their names are just guard. There's a lot of Kasplats in this game, and they each hold a small part of the blueprint for the Blastomatic, which is a weapon capable of destroying the entirety of DK Island. K. Rool gave the Kasplats these blueprints so they could protect them from the Kongs. So yeah, it goes back to the whole guard thing, right? These guys are kind of seen as variants of the Crusha, and you can definitely see why by looking at them. Some strategy guides for the game even mistakenly call it a Crusha. And the Crushes are really cool, don't get me wrong. But this by far surpasses any Crusher design we've ever seen. The formula for the Blue Guard Kremlin was perfected with the Kasplat, and it will stay that way probably forever. But me? I'm fuming. They make the Kasplat one of the coolest motherfuckers I've ever seen, just to never use him again. The amount of blue balls I have right now is literally undescribable. They presented me with a five course meal, then only let me eat the appetizer. They could have had this dude race against Grandma Kong's spirit in Barrel Blast, but I guess that's too much to ask for. Okay, bro. I know this is a random question, but what do you think of barrels? I personally think they're pretty cool. Did you know the oldest barrels in history date all the way back to 2600 BC? And they're still used until this day? Barrels can even hold up to 42 gallons in liquids, and that's a lot of liquid. Anyway, here's a Kremlin wearing a barrel, his name is the Clobber. When I first looked at this, I thought it was just a critter that put on a barrel and then called it a day. But this actually can't be a critter, because these guys have ears. So critters can't just become clobbers. They came from DKC2 and then showed up again in 64. But looking at the DK64 one, I'm not immediately seeing any ears, so I guess in this game critters can actually become clobbers. Clobbers also have a variant called Kabooms, which are just red clobbers that hide in TNT barrels. Kabooms will run at Diddy and Dixie Kong and explode themselves in an attempt to kill the Kongs. Just like the clobber, they appear in both DKC2 and 64. And if you're a huge DK64 head, you instead might know them by their other name that they're sometimes called, the TNT Bomber. 
Now these guys are cool and all, but there's even cooler barrel Kremlings out there. Look at these guys. These guys are like the Kremlin Barrel Power Rangers. The Green Ranger is pretty much identical to the Clobber. The freak with the scary arms acts kind of like the Klinger, which is this pirate Kremlin who just hangs onto ropes. And his name, Clasp, is like you're clasping onto something, but with a K. Next, we got Spyro. This one throws bombs at monkeys. Then finally, the Kraka, the only remotely cool one here. This dude was supposed to be in DKC3 like the other rangers, but he actually ended up getting cut from the game. He has unused sprites that are still in the game's code, and you think this is where the Kraka would die in Donkey Kong Country 3's code. But actually no. For some reason in the Game Boy Advance remake of Country 3, they end up using his unused sprites and put him into the game as an enemy. And it's not even anything special, it's just the rope one, but now he isn't bound to ropes and he can move on the ground, you know, great. His name Kraka isn't even official per se. We only know his name is Kraka because of unused text in the game's credits. It's like that part of the credits where it shows all the enemies' names, right? The text said Kraka, so this is Kraka according to that. Now I've waited a while to hit you with this one, but this is one of the coolest Kremlings, like actually. K Lumsy. This is a giant Kremlin who appears in Donkey Kong 64 and he's surprisingly friendly. He's one of the only Kremlings in the entire series that actually likes the Kongs. Before the events of DK64, King K. Rule ordered K. Lumsey to destroy Donkey Kong Island. Because he's a giant, it would have been an easy task for him. But K. Lumsey actually ends up refusing, which makes K. Rule angry, so he locks him up in a cage. Throughout the course of the game, the Kongs help K. Lumsey by unlocking his cell. Every time they defeat one of the bosses in the game, they get a boss key, which helps unlock K. Lumsey's cage. And each time they unlock a part of his cage, he gets super excited and jumps around and shit which causes actual tremors across Donkey Kong Island, and those tremors reveal more levels that you can go to. After K. Rool is defeated, K. Lumsy becomes free, and the Kongs and him party. I love the vibes he gives off, man. He's so cute. It genuinely gives me joy looking at this big dumb dude. In most releases of the game, we don't really get any information on him besides what I said, but in the Japanese version, that's a different story. In the Japanese release, it's stated that K. Lumsy is actually King K. Rool's younger brother, and this is one hell of a lore drop. We'll definitely never see K. Rool's younger brother ever again, but we should appreciate the time we did get with him. And if you want even more time with him, try 100%ing the game, then you'll see him for like 74 more hours at least. Clubba. Clubba is a built-ass Kremlin who was hired by K. Rool to prevent people from accessing the Lost World, the secret world in DKC2. The area he runs to protect the Lost World is called Clubba's Kiosk, he actually doesn't like K. Rool at all, he believes all the Kremlings are miserable under K. Rool's leadership, so he's down to let Diddy and Dixie just slip into the Lost World with no problems as long as they can give him 15 Krem coins, just completely disobeying K. Rool's order of guarding the Lost World. In his defense, I guess, if you don't want to pay him, you can still get through, but you'd have to fight him. So unless he's bribed, he's still doing his job technically, and he does his job well. If you choose to fight him, he just instantly boots you out of the kiosk. Shit is barely a fight. During the development of Donkey Kong Country 2, Clubba was actually planned as the boss of the Lost World, before being replaced with just a rematch with King K. Rool. Bits of this unused fight were reincorporated into the fight with Cudgel, and Cudgel is just this other buff Kremlin, but he's a boss, and I bet you could have guessed that by what I just said. We're somewhat getting to the final stretch, so let me finally talk about this dumbass game. For some reason, the Donkey Kong series loves making original characters that are specifically for their racing games. This is the roster of Diddy Kong Racing, now this is the roster of Diddy Kong Racing again, but with only the characters that actually appeared in other games. They got a Kremlin in here, that's my brother Crunch, and I've already talked about him before. Watch this video if you want to see Crunch lore that bad. I'm just skipping him because I've already covered him extensively before. But Barrel Blast has a decent amount of original characters too, and they're all Kremlings, so... I have to talk about them. But let me tell you real quick what I'm working with here. These guys show up in Barrel Blast with no story reason or any information attached to them whatsoever. All we get to know is their names. Then they never appeared in anything ever fucking again. So do you know how I'm gonna tell you their lore? Through European Brawl trophy descriptions. Because not even the North American version of Brawl has interesting information on them. I think this is the most rock bottom we've been in this series. Let's get to reading, bro. Calypso. She's a strong leader figure and she has the full trust of the entire Kremlin crew. She's very good at sports and dancing and she apparently owns a clubhouse and it's seen as a literal oasis by all the Kremlings. 
She's also said to be the rival of Tax Collector Kong. You can unlock her as a character in Barrel Blast by winning the Sapphire Cup with a Kremlin. And her name Calypso comes from the word Calypso, which is a style of Caribbean folk music. Next up in our list of Barrel Blast bums, we got Kip. He's said to be the little brat and naughty trickster Kremlin, but he's cherished by all of the Kremlings because of his young age. He tends to rush into situations without thinking about consequences, and he has a fierce rivalry with Diddy Kong, which I personally find very hard to believe. I doubt Diddy Kong gives a fuck about this random Kremlin. Diddy Kong has bigger things to do. He's Diddy Kong. Kip is also a big fan of donuts. Here's our next one. Her name is Cass. This Kremlin girl has hair, and she thought her hair was so stylish that her rocket barrels also needed to have her hair. And looking at her side by side with Kip, am I tripping or is that actually just the same model with different clothes? She's a crumbling girl that's more mature than you'd expect for her age. She's clever but vicious as well. She has a rivalry with Dixie Kong and is always plotting an idea to twist her tail. She also has a deathly fear of frogs. The trophy specifically states that when Winky the Frog pulls up, she shrinks away. Now the best one, Kludge. Kludge is a massive, monstrous Kremlin who once riled up is said to even give King K. Rool trouble. He has a pea brain, so his childlike manner has made him close friends with Kip and Cass. He's so pea brained, in fact, that if he thinks about too much at once, his brain actually overheats. His hobby is devouring anything and everything at the dinner table, and he's the rival of Funky Kong. And honestly, I can see it. This dude looks cool enough to rival Funky, I'd say. You can unlock him by winning the Diamond Cup with a Kremlin. Now that's all the original characters we have in this game, but there's actually one playable character that appears in this game that we haven't talked about, and that's Copter, this ugly ass dude. He has tiny rat legs and he's honestly just built weird. But the thing is man, he used to be cute as hell. This was Copter in his first game appearance, DKC3. In DKC3, he has one of the most creative designs I've ever seen. He likes to fly around, right? but he does so by holding two helicopter blades and then spinning around really fast to take flight. He is the helicopter and he's super cute man, look at this gif. This is top 3 gifs of all time. But then when they put him into barrel blast, they took away literally everything fun about him. They take away his helicopter blades and give him just some basic ass propeller hat, which is honestly just kind of insulting to me, who greenlit this change. They also just made him ugly as shit, so great, now copter's legacy is ruined. And I honestly don't think I can forgive Barrel Blast for this one. He just used to be so fire, man. But before we stop talking about Donkey Kong Jet Race, I wanted to show this concept of some Kremlings that were planned to be in the game, but didn't quite make it. The only one that made it in here was Copter, and we can see that Crusher was planned to be in the game. That's pretty cool. But then there's these two new Kremlings here. This girl Kremling named Cressa. I assume they just liked Calypso's design more, so they put her in over Cressa. But then we got Carrie. This pretty cool Kremlin wearing a bandana. I know nothing about the dude besides his design and name, but if I were to have to guess, maybe Kip ended up replacing this dude as the kid Kremlin. So in conclusion, the only one in this paper to actually make it into the game was the one ugly one. So great. Now what about the DKC cartoon? There are some fire Kremlings here with some very interesting stories, believe it or not. You've waited a while for it, and to be honest, I've hyped it up enough already. So let me pass it to the DKC cartoon lore master Bezzy. What's up guys, it's Uncle Bezzy. I was busy enjoying my retirement after making every single Koopa until Carlito over here came and asked me for another favor. But I can never decline a DKC favor. Forget talking about One Piece and Luffy, let's talk about Captain Scurvy, the real Pirate King. He's a pirate Kremlin who's appeared in multiple episodes and because of this he actually has insane character depth. His first appearance was in an episode called Booty and the Beast, which might I add is one of the best episodes behind uh, the Kung Fu one. Now you might be wondering, what is Captain Scurvy even doing on DK's island in the first place? Before the events of the show, he had fought Cranky Kong in some epic battle which ended up leaving him stranded on this island. Now, if you can't tell by the name, he's a pirate captain, obviously, so he has his own shipmates. These shipmates being Cutlass, Green Croc, and Polly Roger. 
we'll get into those guys a little bit later but in the episode booty and the beast he wants to steal the powerful crystal coconut he considers it his anyways because scurvy's great 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 grandfather quint scurvy was the one who discovered the coconut and brought it to the dk's home island now if you don't know this quint scurvy might just be my actual grandfather but we'll get into that a little bit later scurvy actually ends up getting the crystal coconut but ends up giving it to dk anyways the reason for this is that dk broke scurvy's tooth Long ago, he had sworn on the great, great, great pirate oath that he would grant a favor to anyone who knocked out his tooth, and the favor Donkey asked for was that Scurvy give the Crystal Coconut back. Now, one last thing to add for all my little Pokemon fans, he also has his very own holographic trading card, which is probably worth a whopping $3 on the black market. Now, let's get into the minions of the pirate crew. We have Cutlass. Not to be confused with the Kremlin from the games, the Cutlass, but this is Cutlass, the first crewmate, the right-hand man. He is the number one minion to Captain Scurvy and is very loyal to him. He's also very familiar with the Pirate Handbook, the official book for pirate rules, so he's definitely a well-trained pirate. But we can use this pirate handbook to directly power scale his comrade Green Croc, another Kremlin minion to Captain Scurvy. Green Croc is the weakest link of the pirate crew, and the Mario Wiki directly states that the main reason why he is the weakest is because he did not study the pirate handbook as much as his fellow shipmate Cutlass, which makes him weaker than him. Alright, now I don't have much anger towards a lot of the characters in the cartoon, but this one character just seems to really grind my gears to the silk smooth. We have Crusha. Crusha is a Crusha Kremlin that appears in the show, and he is one of the main henchmen of K. Rule, and he appears in a lot of the episodes actually. Crusha is the big, strong, but dumb character archetype. If you need help thinking of anybody, think of Carlito. He has a hard time understanding the simplest of things, and even enjoys watching shows that are meant for toddlers such as Coco Melon. He is best friends with K. Rool's other top guard in the cartoon, who is General Clump. We'll get to him later. The main episode where he's really relevant was called Speed, where he gets run over by a minecart, which makes him incredibly smart. This threatens the entire world of the DK cartoon, as it should. With his newfound intelligence, he devises a plan to kill every single Kong on the island, some of which I agree with and claims the crystal coconut for himself. He even manages to make K. Rool obey his orders because he was that threatening. He considers K. Rool a pussy, which so do I, and not ruthless enough towards the Kongs, which is clearly evident through K. Rool's countless baseball games with them. But you see, Crusha isn't that cruel. He was willing to let K. Rool live so long as Clump wanted him to live. But this episode has a terrible ending. It ends with him getting hit by a minecart again, making him dumb again, and all the Kongs and K. Rule breathe a sigh of relief. Now, you guys may be wondering, who's K. Rule's right hand man? That's an easy question, it's General Clump. General Clump is a Clump Kremlin, and he is second in command to K. Rule, and he is his main henchman, his main man. He gets shit on a lot by K. Rule, and even fired by him a couple of times, but what best friend or right man doesn't get fired a couple of times? You see, he remains faithful though, to the point where that he even said that serving K. Rule is his life goal. He is one of the main characters appearing in a lot of the episodes, and plans a lot of K. Rule's schemes in the show. Clump has done a lot of random shit during the show. In fact, one time he befriended Dixie Kong and helped her find her lost pet lobster named Thermidor. What the f- Clump actually eats 100 garlic cloves a day, and because of this, he is actually immune to illness, which due to some further research, he would actually die if he did this, but that's besides the case, he might be immune to that as well. This character got a pretty impressive backstory in the Christmas episode, The Congo Bongo Festival of Lights, where it reveals that as a young Kremlin, Clump accidentally started a huge fire that destroyed his swamp homeland where he and his family lived. But this is where the saving grace comes and Clump's older brother decided to take the blame for the fire and in an act of brotherly love towards Clump, this resulted in Clump's brother being banished from the swamp. Now, you may think we'll never see Clump's brother again because who really even cares about Clump's brother? But what if I told you that Clump's brother was actually the DK Pirate King, Captain Scurvy? Clump ended up wanting to join his brother's pirate crew, which, just like any other brother who wouldn't want to join their brother's pirate crew, but he ended up being dissuaded by K. Rule, so he ended up taking up arms and joining K. Rule's army instead. 
Thank you, Bezzy. That brought tears to my eyes, man, as always, brother. But I'm going to cut you off real quick, because I want to finish what I started with this rat. Junior Claptrap. Not only was he born a freak by being a DKC cartoon claptrap, but he's also said to be way bigger than the rest of his claptrap brothers. Like, look at him here next to Diddy Kong. He's a gremlin, bro. Imagine you're going for a walk, and then you see a two-foot-tall cartoon claptrap. I'd honest to God probably shit myself. Because of how big he is, he actually can't be used in the clap blaster, that torture device we talked about earlier. He just straight up can't fit inside the gun. So because of this, he actually gets to be his own character, kinda, and being the actual plots of some of the episodes. He's just a really shitty character. Junior Claptrap also, of course, likes to eat a lot, just like any other Claptrap. But what's different about him is that he wears dentures. And whenever he's working for someone and he becomes a little too annoying by eating random garbage, they usually take away his dentures so he can no longer eat stuff, leaving him to starve. Now the final Kremlin from the cartoon universe, Crushy. This one is really weird, he's not from the actual DKC cartoon like the others. Instead he's from that really weird French spin-off of it, Donkey Kong Planet. If you don't remember, it's that show where you can see Donkey Kong drinking beer and Funky Kong being sexist. Anyway, back to Crushy. He's one of the drippiest Kremlings I've ever seen. You can just tell he's young, hip, and relatable. DK Planet's website described him as a slightly goofy character, but it's also said that he shouldn't be messed with because of his hard teeth and jaw of steel. But when I look at Crushy, I don't notice any teeth. So either they're lying or his teeth are retractable, kind of like Diddy Kong. Here's a picture of his head. At this point, it's really hard to follow up such developed Kremlings like the ones from the DK cartoon, because all I really have left is shit like the Cutlass, dude who holds a sword named after his sword, both a K, and then there's a blue one of those, but now he rides a roller coaster. So you know what that means, man. It's speedrun time. That part where I go through the remaining characters really fast because I want to actually upload again. Let's get straight into it. In DKC2, we got the Kaboings. These guys have two peg legs and are forced to bounce around for eternity. DKC3 variant Recoil. This one is just Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. Coin. This goblin who has a bucket on his head. He uses a trash can as a shield and protects a DK coin. Then we have his official cousin, Coin Dozer. It's said to be a part of the Coin Dozer clan. They are just purple coins who run at you. Kosha is a Kremlin with a giant club, his name means club. There's also a giant Kosha, his nickname is Giant Viking Kremlin. Crockhead, that's just a crocodile. Crook Kremlin Hook. Kongazuma, a Kremlin statue that can move and fight Donkey Kong, he's named after some Aztec ruler. I called this one from earlier Spyro, but this is actually Spyro. This is a critter that turns into a dragon through the power of a crystal banana. Kerosene is a huge Kremlin that breathes fire. He only appeared in the Game Boy port of DKC2. Cuff and Clout, sometimes called the Kremlin Twins, they are just two beefy ass crocodiles. Kremlin Cop, this Kremlin who's nice and dressed, and a cop, as you could probably fucking guess. This is a robotic critter from Mario Strikers. This is a robotic critter from Donkey Kong 64. This is a critter, but he's a skeleton. Holy shit, this is a critter wearing a blanket. This is a critter riding a minecart. This is a critter riding a boat. This is a critter wearing a mushroom outfit. This is a literal reticle. There's apparently a Kremlin behind this gun, and his name is Croc. We never see him though, just the reticle. So this reticle has a fucking name, and it appeared in two games. And then a cardboard cutout of King K. Rool. Jesus Christ, man. That's every single Kremlin ever created known to man. And to be honest, I'm kind of impressed. I'm not pissed as much as I usually am at the end of these videos. Because even though there were some shitters, I don't think I ever found myself bored looking at a Kremlin. Something about these guys really stood out to me. I feel like these guys were really made with a lot of love. And even if they're silly or goofy, I feel like that was always on purpose. These guys were never supposed to be taken seriously. Even their leader is a fucking joke. But that was the point. They are silly, they are dumb. But god do I kinda love them for it. I think they stayed fun because they stopped making variants at a good time, compared to Goombas and Shy Guys where we'll always get more of because there's a new Mario game every two years. I don't think we need more Kremlings, we have a lot, you know what I mean? But we don't have so much to the point where they're boring to look at. I would love to see these guys show up again someday though. Johnny Blastoff sure missed out by not having these guys, but because of their appearance in the Donkey Kong series, we all got to experience the magic of these dumb little reptiles. If you're a Kong, you're family. If you're a Kremlin, you're a dumbass. But that's why we love you. Thank you for watching.